Good morning, welcome back to a new video. As you see, we're starting up again at this tractor, which does not want to go. And uh, yeah, this is not the final time. We're not gonna give up on it, but we are having some ideas what could be wrong. As I was watching the older videos, and a viewer actually suggested me and directed me to the older videos, where he noticed that the rings maybe were not aligned, and it looked like they were like, really badly aligned like I didn't maybe know the line it so we're gonna check that if that's a problem and uh, also maybe this like if it's seized up in the winter we started in the cold condensation gets rusty in there maybe the rings rusted out we're gonna check that and if not we have our solution which is to take the parts from the blue tractor because the crankshaft is broken but all the rest of the parts are still okay so they will run in this tractor it's not like this tractor is in any better condition so it will be better than not running so yeah we gotta see if that solution solves it and then we have to also solve the clutch before we can drive it but i can see that we can adjust the clutch there's like little thingies that push the clutch and they're out of alignment that could be what caused it it could be that pushed it out of alignment i don't know if that is actually the case or if something broke but we're gonna try it so let's see if we can get this guy started maybe That is covered in oil. Look at the thickness. We've gotten everything off. We are fully bare bones, kind of. So we have all the pistons visible, and uh, there are quite a lot of rust. That's from the condensation in the winter. That wouldn't be much of a problem, but the rings are all in same same line. I clearly didn't know. Some of them are perfectly apart, and this one is the worst one. Pretty much the oil just goes straight into the piston. And the problem this creates probably it was spreading the oil out through the valve into the exhaust and then leaking into the rest of the cylinders as it's sitting on kind of level surface so it all just flows back into that all those cylinders this was probably our fault because they do have all oil sitting in them really old and stinky and they're really black so it means they were trying to pretty much burn oil up from the pressure so yeah this is not good and um, we are gonna try to solve this probably it was kind of lack of compression if all of them also go together i'm not sure if that causes lack of compression if the compression escapes into the cylinder i remember there was actually smoke coming through the pipe of the bottom which is kind of like an overflow for oil it was coming through there so maybe that's what was causing also no compression in the cylinder and good compression rest. This could be our core problem. If I fix it and assemble it and it doesn't work, it's gonna be quite annoying because you know, then it has to come apart again. Something else is causing the problem. 
uh, but this ones here have the new heads on them so it's not the heads leaking the all other two could be the heads are also cracked uh, micro cracks and they could be leaking but anyway anyways let's try to clean them up let's clean up the rust and put it all aligned and then put the cylinders back on assemble it and see if it runs uh, in this case it looks like it was just bad alignment and also the lack of movement was caused by all the rust which could have been caused by some really heavy oil uh, it could have stopped by heavy oil into the injectors lubricates and would have been okay but in this case we have not aligned our rings correctly so let's try to do that and hopefully that fixes it So as it looks like it was rusted and they were completely not aligned, uh, one was completely not aligned and as we were looking to set it back we realized we're thinking why is this one different and it's different because that's the older generation that actually comes from our spare engine which is completely rusted out so they actually took this one from that because the cylinders don't match so you cannot put this cylinder on here. It's one of these two cylinders because we swapped the cylinders around just to see if something with a compression problem but I doubt it so yeah we swapped them around and it didn't fit two of the cylinders that were you know remaining so it was one of these cylinders is a bitty bitty bigger uh, which is meant for these older generation ones so instead of putting it back together which takes quite a long time we're just gonna go on and take the parts from the blue tractor and put it all on here we're gonna swap everything put all the pistons all the rings pistons come with the rings and also head cylinders everything from that engine because we know those things work and that should solve it it has compression has fuel so it should run then but yeah let's get to that point we have to go and deassemble it we also know that the new engine that we got has everything good we checked it so we don't need to worry about that it needs parts and if it does here's many that will go off and we can use it there next day as you can see it's quite cold I've switched my hat I actually need a scarf and a jacket probably but I'll survive I rather want to be a bit more flexible my hands are freezing it's close to zero it was actually everything frozen this morning but right now it's like close to zero we're gonna continue we have to take out all the pistons and by taking them out we need to take out the pistons together with the rods so we have to take off the oil pan leak out the oils from both engines I hate it because it's like 30 screws holding in the pan so it's quite a mess to just get it out and uh, then it's just eight screws and we have all the pistons out and then the same on the other tractor and then swap them in there and hopefully the green tractor we can assemble it back and start it if that doesn't work then I really don't know what's wrong with that guy that should be kind of the final thing this guy had working hard so we're giving it 
to that engine. It's like a donor donating its internals to that tractor and hopefully that tractor works and this one's getting a fully fully new engine so hopefully this one's gonna be okay as well after but yes let's get that tractor going hopefully we have two tractors before the snow before the christmas before the freezing cold comes because it is getting really cold upcoming this week we actually had really warm um, autumn so we are pretty lucky but now it's getting over and we have harsh winter coming so let's get started take out the oil Full of diesel. Let's work fast and efficient. So they are all out. The other engine, the blue one, it took us an hour because we were learning and this one took us only 20 minutes to take them out. So you learn it once and then you pretty much can do it, no problem. Uh, I did call the tractor repair guy who is helping us, the technician. He's pretty much an expert, an older guy that knows everything about these tractors, been working on them all his life. And I asked him if I can put these rods into this one because the shaft, the crankshaft, um, it's more worn than that one. You know, and there's the difference and there could be a gap. And he said just to check these ones, these are like little inserts. Check if those are the same, if they're the same, it doesn't matter, it's perfectly fine. They're exactly the same, so we are good to go. So they should be fitting perfectly fine onto this engine, it is pretty much standard. So yeah, there is repair ones, if you have a really worn crankshaft, not really like, it's just millimeters, or even less than millimeters, it's gonna be uh, a bit bitty bigger. But this one looks like it's perfectly fine, so we're gonna put it in. So hopefully this solves everything. This was a running from a running engine, so putting everything as is, so it should be a working engine. Let's put these in. We have attached everything, it's all swapped. 
This is the moment of truth. Does it actually work? First of all, we're gonna try all, all the injectors, see if they spray, then we're gonna insert them and see if it starts. I have the gas fully off now, so let's see if they spray now. There might be something wrong with the pump and giving too much uh, fuel, because I have a feeling that it's giving even when the gas is fully closed off when it's you know supposed to be not running anything. And that's how you kind of turn it off. These things don't have like a stop, uh, no choke, no nothing, no way of stopping it. It's only by stopping the fuel supply. So let's try. Something. What? If there's again fuel going in the oil. Shouldn't be that fast. No, all is okay. So. <laughs> it literally wants to go, but why isn't it keep going? It just stops on that one part. Okay, it's full of oil. <laughs> the clutch takes a lot of the power away. So it is end of three days uh, of messing with this thing. It took us a long time to get all the parts out of this and into here and we had so much hope that it's gonna work because you know all those parts were from a working tractor that we put down working and uh, with you know the minor problem that it has but other than that it should have been working so we came to the conclusion as we've gone through everything the injectors are spraying everything is good it seems like it is the fuel pump that is causing the problem because we had one head actually that was leaking oil as you saw we replaced that that was quite a problem, that probably got cracked maybe when that was going really badly, that engine. So we swapped that, all good, no fuel in the cylinders, only a lot, a lot, a lot of diesel that is not burning up. So it feels like the timing is completely off. Of the fuel tank, a fuel pump, I'm pretty sure it's only one way to insert it, but I'm not sure if you're supposed to put the engine in a certain way and then insert it. The fuel for the first cylinder matches with the first cylinder valves being flat, so when you adjust them, so in theory, it seems like it's adjusted, but the governor, which was causing the problem, which we told them to fix, which is why we brought it in, it doesn't look like it's changed at all and it's still stuck. It's supposed to move back and forth and govern the engine to run smoothly and it's just sitting still. And if I try to move it with my, myself, I can feel that something is trying to move it, but not strong enough. It's like I'm helping it, but it's not enough for it to move on its own. So either that fuel pump is not fixable, that's not repairable. We paid a lot of money for it to get restored, but clearly they just kind of scammed the money out of us and it's not working. I'm gonna call them and ask them, but it's you know, been quite a lot of months, you know, we should have brought it straight away to them saying it's not working, but we thought it's something else when it didn't work. So we're like, what else could it be? We got it restored, you know, it should work. So I think that his original problem was the fuel pump and we still have that problem. We might take the fuel pump from the other tractor, put it on just to confirm that it's the fuel pump if it runs with that, because that fuel pump needs to go on the new engine, we can't have it on this one, but that will confirm it. And we do have another fuel pump that my uncle gave us, which is a bit rusty, so it needs restoration again. So maybe it's worth fixing that. It's a much more simpler, older fuel pump, not these new uh, big fuel pumps. It's a much smaller one like the other tractor has. Maybe that solves it. But yeah, enough talking. We said we're gonna post it when it starts. It did start, so that was that. But uh, if the governor doesn't work properly, it cannot run for long, it cannot run smoothly. As you heard, it was running really low RPMs. So it could not adjust itself. I was putting as much gas as I can. And if I put less, it just stopped. So yeah, that's a problem. I checked, I rechecked all the injectors. All of them are spraying perfect mist out. So it's not the injectors. Uh, there's loads of compression. 
So that's pretty much all you need. We checked the fuel, the filter for if there's, you know, obstructions in there, nothing in there. I don't know. I think it is the fuel pump. It cannot be anything else. The timing of the fuel pump might be incorrect. We're going to try to put the other fuel pump and then we also have to fix the clutch and then it should be drivable so we can bring Hero. Should be. And we've been hoping for nearly a year that it, you know, should be working, but it's been forever. This thing is literally like it's cursed. It does not want to run. It, it has like no, like one thing for life. I don't know. We are doing everything by the steps that it should be. You know, we've gone through everything and fixed it and we're still here. So yeah, after maybe like 20 videos we've done on this, <laughs> still not working. Maybe next video, hopefully next video, if there's, there's no... We're not posting anything if it doesn't work, so I'm gonna yeah, get we're it started, done. and then we're gonna start filming. You know, it's gonna like run, and then we're gonna film. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it with this video. It was a long one. It was a lot of mess. If you don't like tractors, it's probably not the most fun for you. And even if you like tractors, it's pretty repetitive after a while. So yeah, hope you enjoyed. And we're gonna see you next time. Bye bye. It was pretty repetitive for us to do the work. I can pretty much do it blind as a girl. It's like building a Lego. The reason why I wanted to fix this one because we thought it's easier to fix this one, less time consuming than fixing this one. Because, you know, we need to put the engine inside, so that's why we did this one and invested so much time in it that we could have been doing this engine. Would have been done by now. We would probably be putting it in today. Okay.